want to do now is add structure to the gesture and start really figuring out how to make this thing a bit more three-dimensional and really exist in three-dimensional space and figure out what those underlying shapes are, where the blocky forms are, where the cylindrical forms are, uh, you know, where we can break things down into really obvious planes. You know, think about top plane, side plane, front plane, back, whatever. You know, so we got to start figuring this stuff out and figuring out, sorry, bring this out a little bit more, and figuring out how to get that to work. There we go. So, also I'm gonna get a little bit more of this drapery in here. I know there's a negative shape sitting right here. And we have kind of this box coming up behind him. It's gonna be a box sitting right back in here, but I'll worry about that a little more later. But again, it's gonna be good to have them sitting on something, but we'll figure that out in a bit. So like I was saying, moving on to these structural forms, right? I'm gonna start probably with the most obvious forms, which is the legs, because they're kind of coming towards us, so that's probably the easiest place to identify some cylinders and some blocky type shapes. And so when we get into structure, it's partly gonna be structure, but then there's kind of some anatomical components that help guide the structure and help show us where to push overlaps and where not to. And so the first thing I wanna think about is, say this leg, for instance. It's essentially a cylinder with a blockier shape for the knee and then a cylindrical shape for the lower leg and then a blockier shape for the ankle, right? So we need to figure out at what angle that cylinder is sitting. So let me move this out of the way. If we were gonna draw an actual cylinder that sits in there, it's probably gonna look something, oh, I'm not even gonna make it look like a leg. Let's just make a pure cylindrical shape. And we need to figure out how this cylinder and then say a blocky shape for the knee is gonna to relate to this leg. So if we take this cylinder, get rid of that section and place that right in here. And it's all about figuring out exactly how much to bend that line in a way that correctly describes a cylinder that's turning just the right amount so that we have a cylinder turning towards us. And shows us just the right amount of lower part of the leg versus side plane of the leg versus top of the leg. You know, if you do it right, it should accurately describe exactly which parts of the leg we're seeing and ultimately, that's going to help guide the direction of your halftone strokes and show you kind of where our soft and hard edges should exist. You know, so now we're going to have kind of this blocky shape. For the knee. Kind of sitting out front. Yeah, it's kind of long, knobby knees. There's a little bit of muscle coming and draping around this far side. Uh, ultimately, that kneecap looks like it's sitting kind of right out here. Uh, one thing I always look for, and something that's always helped me, quite a bit actually, 
is to look for the head of the fibula, which is kind of that bump right on the side of your knee. And in this case, it looks like it's sitting right about here. And I know there's a tendon that runs right along that bottom part of the leg. It's actually, it actually comes from the biceps femoris, which is a muscle that runs along the bottom of your leg. And then the tendon actually comes and connects down the side of the knee and connects right onto the head of the fibula right there. You know, so then there's a straight. The fibula itself is straight and there's gonna be a straight that runs from that head of the fibula to the outside of the ankle right in there. And then that's gonna double check and also help me design the inside of the tibia. This can't get too thin and it can't be too wide. It needs to be a width that resembles a correct bone width, you know? And so it's gonna help double check that and also help make sure it's in the right spot and also get this ankle in the right spot. And sit right about here, you know? So then once we have that in place, we'll be able to kind of focus a little bit more on the calf. Make sure the calf is coming out from behind here. And again, we're gonna have a little bit of an anatomical indication, a little bit of separation between the gastrocnemius and the soleus, which is that little change right in there. You know, and then we're gonna get overlap between there and that ankle right there. Then on the inside, we're gonna have the calf or specifically gastrocnemius coming out from behind here and draping down behind this bone. Running down this way that way, and then getting overlapped by the tibia right in there. Now, once that's in place, again, I'm thinking about cylindrical forms. We're gonna have, you know, we're looking down at the leg. So we're looking down into this cylinder right here. making sure that's working correctly. You know, so I need to take this and apply it to this. Now being able to draw these basic shapes and manipulate them and be able to draw them, being able to visualize them and draw them from just about any angle is super important. You know, cause now I can come in and figure out how this cylindrical form sits around here and then down at the bottom down here, we're actually gonna have a boxy shape for the ankle, which is gonna sit right down in here. You know, and that is gonna help separate out that front and side plane of the leg. And you can even see the, the shadow that gets draped down on there has a very clear kind of front and side plane separation to it. So I recommend drawing a ton of these little basic shapes. A lot of them. I mean, I, I can't stress that enough. You know, I mean, spending a lot of time on those is extremely helpful. So next up, I mean, I would say this leg's a little tougher. We'll probably come back to that one. I'd probably, let's do this arm next, right? So this arm is being pulled out towards us a bit. And also we have this forearm actually kind of going away from us a little bit also, you know, so we have to take that into consideration plus a few anatomical type details. That would probably be a good idea to get in there. So we're going to come in, find this shoulder. 
looping down this way. Um, we're going to have kind of this top part of the shoulder. Cutting over here. Again, trapezius coming down and wrapping around. Connecting to both the clavicle and the scapula. But again, we'll come back to that. Just right now, focus on the cylindrical shape of the arm being toward, pulled towards us a bit, which means that contour is going to wrap around this way. Remember, we have essentially a cylinder that's more shallow now. It's barely being tilted out towards us. So we need to think about what that's going to look like. We're going to end up with more shallow lines cutting across there. Right, so we end up with contours running across here. Here. Uh, some an anatomy coming in this direction. We get a little bit of the tricep. <laughs>